In this video, I'd like to explain to you how an FPGA works. Now, you've already used an FPGA for lab two, and we're going to be using FPGAs for the remaining labs uh, for the rest of the course, but we haven't actually talked about uh, what an FPGA is or, or how it works on the inside. Um, so I think it's useful at this point, now that we know a little bit more about sequential circuits, to take a look at um, what the internals of an FPGA are. So the first thing you need to know about FPGAs is that they are going to take uh, a circuit that you design, right? A logic circuit that you design using DHDL or a schematic, either way, and they are going to condense that into actual hardware. Um, but the way that it works is they're going to take your circuit and convert it into what's called a lookup table. So over here on the left-hand side, you see I've got a logic circuit. You'll notice that this is actually a combinational circuit. There's nothing sequential about it at all. Um, and so what's going to happen is that once we code this up, either via some, uh, schematic or VHDL, Xilinx, the software, is going to uh, run every single possible input combination through this and then store the results. It's actually going to store the results. And then it's going to take those results and put them into a lookup table, much like the truth tables that we've been constructing in class. The reason for this is that it's very uh, much more efficient um, and faster to simply look up the output value than to recompute that output value every single time. So um, we're going to compute the outputs once, right? We're going to simulate the outputs, compute them, and then store them in this table. And then when the actual circuit itself is running, it just pipes the outputs in, looks up the value in the table, and then pulls the appropriate output. So you can see here that it tries to be as efficient as it can. It will try to reuse inputs in different lookup tables if, if it's necessary. But each table can only be responsible for one output. right? So that's one piece of an FPGA. Let's take a look at uh, a high-level diagram then of what an FPGA actually looks like. Here is the internals of an FPGA. You see that I've got these configurable logic blocks, these blue squares in this particular diagram. That's going to be probably the most important part of the FPGA uh, from our perspective. This is where the brains of the FPGA are. Um, then I have wires connecting uh, all of these various configurable logic blocks, right? as well as a switch matrix, which you can think of as a series of traffic lights right? that dictates um, where the wires are supposed to be connected, how the, how the uh, current is supposed to be flowing through the various components of the FPGA. And then finally, around the edge, I have I.O., input and output, uh, where I can you know, take my inputs, run them through the configurable logic blocks, and then uh, put them back to the outputs. So between this setup with these configurable logic blocks and these lookup tables, right, we can construct any circuit that we possibly could want, any possible circuit that we want. Um, if you think about it from the perspective of these lookup tables, right, there are only a certain number of possible combinations that these lookup tables could actually have. There's only a certain number of, of uh, permutations that these lookup tables can actually take. So part of the simulation process is simply figuring out which permutation is the one that we need for the task at hand. Okay. Um, so then if we take a look at what's actually inside of a configurable logic block, it should be no surprise that we see these four input lookup tables. Now, this is um, accurate for the FPGAs that we are using, the Spartan boards. Uh, in more modern FPGAs, you actually will see larger lookup tables um, that may have even six inputs or uh, perhaps even more, perhaps even eight inputs, right? Uh, but these are going to be the actual functions. These are going to be the actual um, function generators, the, the actual logic for the circuit that we are trying to implement on this particular FPGA. Then you see there's a significant amount of configuration stuff involved. So here I see configuration bits. Uh, this is driving essentially the switch matrix, right, and these wire segments. That's what uh, this is basically referring to here. And then I have some other stuff down here for a clock. So I want to make sure to uh, select the uh, rising edge of the clock. And then finally, perhaps uh, one of the other most important pieces of this FPGA is the flip-flops that you see in here. So the flip-flops are going to enable us to uh, provide storage to our circuits, which is exactly what we're talking about right now with our sequential circuits, with our finite state machines. So the lookup tables then, in other words, can be thought of as the combinational piece, 
of our circuits. The flip-flops then grant us the ability to do sequential logic in our circuits as well within the FPGA. And that's about all there is to it. Any logic